Have you ever been caught in the rain in a hike, found yourself soaking wet, and just wondering, what am I doing wrong? How can I make this better? Well, today we're diving into the art form, the art of wet weather hiking. Now we're gonna go through some things about gear, things about layering, things about food, things about setting up your shelter in the rain, and hopefully a few extra trips, tips, not trips, tips that will help you stay dry on your next rainy adventure. So let's just transform that rainy trail from gloomy to glorious. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back. Mauser here and well, we've all been there, haven't we? Soggy, uncomfortable and just questioning our gear and even our life choices on a rainy hike five days into a trip. You're just soaked and you're just like, what am I doing? But it's not just about the gear. Today, we're diving into the art of how to stay as dry as possible on the trail. And when I say as dry as possible, that means that you can't stay 100% dry if it's raining, unless you're inside a house or something, I guess. Now, whether you're battling relentless rain or it's just a misty day, hopefully I've got some tips that'll change your hiking game. So let's get straight into it, into today's video. Let's go. Now, first up, let's just get one thing absolutely clear before I get into this thing. There is absolutely no 100% way to stay 100% dry while you're out in the trail, unless it doesn't rain. If you are on a hike, and especially on one of the longer hikes, if you're going for a few days or more, you're pretty much guaranteed, especially here in Tasmania, in Australia, you're going to be pretty much guaranteed to get a bit damp. Now that could be due to the rain, it could be due to the sweat, it could be due to falling in a river, who knows? But be prepared for it, and that's something you just mentally gotta embrace when you're heading out on a hike, especially here in Tasmania, Australia. With that out of the way, let's get straight in and look at our first little tip, and that is gearing up for rainy hikes. Let's look at gear essentials. Now, I am pretty pedantic about keeping stuff dry, about staying dry when I'm out the track. One of the reasons I'm making this video is because I thought I'd have a few tips to impart. And the first bit of advice I can give you in relation to gear and keeping your gear dry is to use a pack lining system. Now, when I am packing my pack, all my gear is contained within a pack liner inside my pack. So I've got my pack, my, normally these days I'm using a Hyperlite pack, which is made out of Dyneema, is fairly waterproof, not waterproof, very water resistant is what I'd call it, but hey, well, it's almost waterproof, it's pretty good. But I keep a pack liner inside that pack, a full pack liner that encompasses the whole internal area of the pack, and that is the first thing I pack when I'm going out on a trip. So I put my pack liner in, line the pack out. Now you can use a garbage bag, a trash compactor bag. I have a pack liner, I've had it for years. Uh, I've only ever had to buy sort of one for each pack I've owned and generally they last forever these things. I don't get a problem with them wetting through, that may be an issue for some, but it's a good system to have and you put the pack liner in and then everything that goes in my pack is also in its own bag as well. And when I say everything, I mean things like my spare clothes that I am only going to wear at camp. They go in their own separate stuff sack, separate waterproof stuff sack. Then my clothing that I might need out in the trail, things like my warm jacket, a thermal top, my beanie, they will go in another plastic bag or stuff sack to keep them dry as well. And also if those things get wet, they go back into that bag sort of to keep them separate from all my dry gear. I have a little waterproof sack for my electronics, for my little knickknacks. I have one for my first aid kit. All my food for a big trip will go into, depending on the size of the trip, either one stuff sack or for a nine or 10 day trip, it'll go into three stuff sacks. And inside those stuff sacks, I've got my food sort of divided up into meals and todays and that sort of thing. It just keeps it organized and it keeps it dry. So when I pack it, it all goes into my pack. Then I roll the pack liner at the top and that thing is secure. On top of that, once I've rolled the top on it, before I close the top of the pack, I'll put my wet weather gear, if I'm not gonna need it straight away, that will go in on the top, ready to access if I need it quickly. Now, some people are probably looking at me saying, what about a pack cover? That's a good idea. Well, sometimes it is. And I used to use a pack cover all the time, but the more and more I went into off-track areas, into scrubby areas, and especially on the high mountain peaks, rocky terrain, places like that where it gets windy, the pack liner I would find would blow off, it would come off, it wouldn't conform to the pack correctly. It, they just ended up blowing off. You'd end up putting them into the stuff pocket of your front of your pack, and I really ended up not using them, and I didn't find them that useful. If I knew it was gonna be torrential rain for days on end and I was heading out in a big walk, I may consider one these days, but generally, 
I use a Hyperlite pack. I find them very waterproof and water resistant. They don't absorb water. So I don't see need for a pack cover when I'm hiking. If you had an older canvas style pack, something like that, it could be useful, but for the time being, I'm off pack covers. But I guess the main thing with this point is that you keep everything in your pack as dry as you possibly can. And I only ever open my pack when it's raining. If I absolutely must do it, if it's a rainy day, I know it's gonna be a rainy day, things like my lunch and stuff will sit outside that pack liner in the top of my pack. So I'm not having to open up the pack liner to get stuff out. I have everything that I think I will need for the day outside of the pack liner, but still tucked inside my pack, inside the waterproof pack that I'm using. And then it's an easy access and and the stuff inside my pack won't get wet. In terms of other gear, your rain gear should be waterproof, lightweight, and breathable. Now, you've got things like the heavier style Gore-Tex jackets. They're really good at keeping the weather off and at keeping you dry, but they are heavier. They are often more expensive. And when you're hiking in humid conditions, you'll actually sweat a lot in there. Even when it's raining, you get wet on the inside from sweat. So a lighter jacket may be better for the type of trip you're going on, depending on where you're going, that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Now, I've done reviews on my favorite jacket before, but it's this one, the Beta AR jacket, Arcteryx, great jacket. I find it is just the right balance of weight and durability, and it's not too heavy, so I can walk in this. It's got things like pit zips there, so I can ventilate. When I'm walking the rain and it's still quite warm, I can open the pit zips up there, and I can get some ventilation happening. I can open up the front of the jacket as well. This is a waist, just to the waist length jacket. So it does not going down past my thighs, anywhere like that. Great jacket for the sort of hiking I do in very scrubby, very rough terrain. If I was going to go on a form track on a very nice, well made track, I might take a very thin jacket like a something like a Montbell style jacket, which I do have as well. And I would take that. I know it's not going to get worn out or torn from rough terrain that I take this jacket in. The Arcteryx jacket, like I've said on this video before, it is just a fantastic jacket for Tasmanian scrub and rough conditions. Now, I will wear this in conjunction with my overpants and I use a couple of different pairs. I use the Patagonia Torrent Shell pants, these ones here. I like them, they are quite comfortable. They've got long zips on the sides, which is important. And I also, also use the Beta AR pants, which go with the jacket. These are also really good, really good for tough terrain, probably better than the torrent shells. But the thing I don't like about with these is the shorter zips. So if I actually want to put these on when it's raining, I need to take my boots off. And that is most inconvenient when you're walking and you need to get these on quickly. You don't want to have to take your boots off. So for that reason, these don't come that much anymore. So the tyrant shell, that's what we tend to walk in. I loved the Arcteryx Zeta SL pants. I had went through two pairs of them. They just went up to the tough conditions of Tasmania. I wish they would have been because they were the most comfortable pants I've ever worn. And they had the longer zips. They had everything going for them. They just weren't quite durable enough. And like with the jacket, comfort and breathability are very important with overpants. I never used to wear overpants in my early years of hiking. I just found them uncomfortable. I bought very cheap ones and I just had them there in case of really bad weather. But these days I really value them, especially when I'm walking through scrub in the middle of summer. And that is a good reason to have very breathable pants. If you're using them in very scrubby, bushwhacking sort of conditions, you want something that's gonna breathe, especially when you've got to put them on in the heat. When you're not using them for rain, you're using them to protect your legs. And on that note, it is really important when you are walking, when it is hot, when it is raining, that you are really keeping an eye on the layers you are wearing and changing as soon as you need to, in and out of gear as you need to. Now, I will often on the track be changing, you know, anywhere up to four or five times in a one hour period, depending on what the weather's doing. The rain starts, immediately I stop, I put the pack down, I will get a jacket on, so I do not get wet before I put the jacket on, because there's nothing worse than getting all drenched from the rain, then putting your jacket on to protect yourself, and then you're moist inside and outside, and it's not a nice situation. So as inconvenient as it is, stopping every five minutes if you have to, to take a layer off, to put a layer on, to take your raincoat off so you can put a warmer thermal on underneath, then put your raincoat back on. It's really important to do that as the need arises and likewise taking layers off as you become too hot because the hotter you get, the more you will sweat and potentially the colder you will get when you stop 
because then all of a sudden you have got a wet layer of clothing on against your skin and you're really going to chill off when you stop walking so it's all about sort of controlling the levels of moisture there is no surefire way to stay completely dry other than walking really really slowly and try not to sweat i guess but um that's my advice get your layering right and constantly change it as you need to and that is something i took years to learn something that i do now is just i stop all the time and make sure I am comfortable 100% of the time. And with your gear, make sure that it is well maintained. That means things like waterproofing it regularly. I've done a video about that. Link is up there, link is down below. I've done a video about waterproofing Gore-Tex and how to do that. I do mine probably twice a year now. It really makes a difference and you don't want your jacket wetting through. And that is when it just becomes damp. It's the water isn't beading anymore. You want it to be beading off the jacket and off the pants when you're wearing them. When you're storing your gear, you also want to hang it up. Don't leave it scrunched up in the corner in a ball somewhere or in a, in a pack. Never leave it in your pack. Hang it up on a coat hanger in a cupboard or somewhere where it's gonna be nicely and not crinkled up. You really wanna look after this stuff. It's expensive and it will last you a long, long time if you look after it well. And when you get back from a trip, when your gear's all wet, if you get back from a trip and your gear's all wet, don't leave it sitting in your pack overnight. I just, no, I can't do that. I can't, I've got to look after my gear. The moment I get back from a walk, before I do anything else, I get the wet gear out and I just hang it somewhere. If, even if I'm not gonna wash it straight away or clean it or, or maintain it, I will hang it up somewhere so it can dry, so it stays in good condition. That's a little Mauser tip for you right there. In terms of other clothing tips, I've gone through it before, keep your layering system up to speed. Look at that video up there about layering. Avoid cotton at all costs. Choose materials that wick the water like cotton. I mean, not cotton. What are you talking about? I just said no cotton. Choose wicking materials like wool, polyester, polar fleece. These will suck the water away from your skin basically and prevent sort of risk of hypothermia by drawing water away from the skin. And with your layering system, what I tend to do is I generally always have at least one layer that remains dry all the time. So I might have my synthetic warm pants and a thermal top or my insulating layer top kept in my pack at all times for use in the tent only. I'll also keep a pair of socks in there as well. That way, when I get into camp and it's wet and it's cold, I know I've got something good to get into before I get into my sleeping bag or into my quilt, in my case, because I use a quilt. In terms of footwear, I tend to always take a little blister kit or two with me. When your feet get wet, you've got a higher chance of getting blisters. So I always find that very useful to take, especially given my history of blisters. Now, I like to wear boots, like I've said before, on my trips. And inevitably, on these big trips, these big missions I go in, go on, go on, go in, go on for a week or more I tend to I'm guaranteed of getting wet feet pretty much my socks get wet my boots get wet and like I said a second ago I always ensure I have one dry pair of socks that I can wear in the tent and around camp so normally on a trip like that I would take three pairs two are for walking in one is purely for tent life and the thing with heading out on trips like this when it is going to be a wet trip you've got to be prepared to put on wet stuff in the morning including your socks you've got to put on wet socks I remember a trip a few years ago I did I woke up one morning Morning. my socks were completely frozen morning well we just woke up it's about 6 a.m final day it's been very cold during the night so cold that my socks froze where they were hanging so, frozen socks for brekkie that's what i'm walking in today yep that was a cold one it was freezing, but what I had to do there was actually pour some boiling water on my socks to warm them up a bit, put on, scrunch the water out, put them on, get walking, get this blood circulating, and I was fine within about half an hour of setting out from camp. And often I will just put that wet clothing on. If it, the rain clears and I've got wet gear, I will hang it out to dry. I'll even put it on and wear it around if it warms up a bit. And, and then I find that my polar fleeces, things like that, my thermals will dry out very quickly if I'm wearing them. I'll even wear damp socks if they are just damp. I wear them to bed at night and they will dry overnight on my feet same with my thermal if i know the weather is going to sort of improve i'll do that and then i know that i can dry my sleeping bag out a bit if it gets a bit damp I'm not a huge fan of that but it is a good way to dry stuff even if you're just sitting around in the tent not in your sleeping bag i put my thermal on if it's damp just to dry it out as much as possible and then hang it up now for those of you that wear trail runners they are actually pretty good in wet conditions because they drain the water much better than boots do and a lot of people using trail runners will find their feet dry fairly 
fairly quickly, even after a river crossing or something, the shoes just drain the water really well and they can make a big difference to your feet as well. Now where it's safe to do so, I tend to take my boots off for a river crossing if I can, if the water isn't too bad and I can see what's on the bottom, I will do that. Otherwise, my feet are probably wet anyway, so I just plow on through and they dry out eventually. You've got squelchy boots. What can you do? And another thing that is a good idea is gaiters. They will help keep a little bit of water out when you're going through, you know, just splashy puddles, things like that. So don't forget the gaiters. A couple of other options. Trekking poles really help in wet conditions in terms of maintaining stability, helping you from slipping over into a puddle, something like that, even falling into a lake. Now, one thing, it may not help you from falling into a lake, but it might help you keep you a bit drier in the rain. And you might say I'm crazy by saying this, and I've never taken one, but I have seen people with them, and that is an umbrella. And I do own a Helinox umbrella. It's a good umbrella, and I've considered taking that on walks. I was in a mountain range last summer. It was raining. I was absolutely saturated from my raincoat all through on our walk up a mountain and we passed a group and one of the guys, very experienced bushwalker, very experienced hiker, he had an umbrella and he was walking up through this scrubby forest with an umbrella and I thought that looks really nice, he is staying dry, that is not a bad idea. So something to consider, have you used an umbrella before? Let me know down below. And just quickly before we move on to the next Thing. please don't forget to like and subscribe we've got a great following now we've got weekly videos we've also got a newsletter so you can sign up to that just here somewhere yep right there sign up to newsletter like subscribe do that stuff and you'll get a video every week in fact every single week and we've got a good back catalog too way back there somewhere we've got heaps of videos get into it get involved get subscribed but let's get back to this video now and something else to think about when you're out hiking in the wet is your shelter your tent your home away from home the first thing you've got to be familiar with your tent you've got to know how to set it up quickly and efficiently so practice doing it at home practice it so you can take you two or three minutes to set up your tent make sure you know exactly how to erect it quickly and efficiently and the way i pack my tent when i'm out on a trip generally is i will have it near the top of my pack tents are pretty light these days and sometimes we'll split the fly up between one person and i'll carry the main tent or vice versa but we have them at ready access near the top of our pack for a couple of reasons Firstly, if it's raining, it means we can get it out straight away and get it set up quickly without getting all our other gear out and that getting wet. Secondly, it's one of the last things to pack up and it goes on the top of your pack. And especially if your tent is wet, I keep it again in its own dry sack. So if it's wet, it doesn't get all my other stuff wet. I do pack it on the outside of my pack liner inside the pack if it is wet. And that just sort of prevents all my other stuff getting wet. But I just keep it near the top of my pack. We can get our tent out. We can have that set up in about four, five minutes, absolute max. And we'll have it set up and then we can put our packs in under the vestibule so we'll have the tent set up we'll then put our packs in under the vestibules while we secure the rest of the tent ensure it's set up properly and after we've set it up properly we can get inside in under the vestibule get the wet gear off and get in the tent but before we get into the vestibule i just like to make sure everything is done it's raining outside i do not want to be back outside once i get in comfy in my tent so i will do things like collect enough water for the next night for the night that i'm going to be here i will go to the toilet i'll also do one last circuit of the tent to make sure it's set up properly then i will get myself in that vestibule zip it up get in there just in, in the outside of my tent under the vestibule get my raincoat off then sit in the tent get my overpants off and gradually start getting all that out in the vestibule so that wet stuff is outside the tent still but it's undercover then i can get set up in in my tent get a dry set of clothes on get my sleeping pad out get my sleeping bag out and if it's a nice warmish sort of day still with the rain i might keep that top on to dry it out but once you're in there i'm going to stay dry i'm going to dry out and i'm not heading back out again and with your campsite before you go hastily setting it up because of the rain you just want to get into camp you want to get in that comfy little comfort zone inside your tent before you do that look at the campsite think about it are you camping right next to a little stream are you on the highest sort of point you can be within reason just have a look at your campsite before you set up so you don't end up been in a flood in the middle of the night and having to move in the dark that's not fun and when you are packing up your tent i always take a little little lightweight towel or one of those little blue sponge things and i will just wipe down the tent as i'm packing up give it a good shake off once i've got everything out of there once i've packed up i'll give it a good shake off hopefully the rain has stopped if it hasn't stopped i can't do that but i'll give it a wipe off and dry it off as much as possible if it is still raining then it's a whole different scenario. I am getting dressed inside the tent. I am packing my pack, which is still in the vestibule, from inside the tent, getting everything in there as much as possible, emptying the tent out into my pack. Then I will put my wet weather gear on, open my vestibule, roll top the pack before we put the tent away. Packs 
secure, put that to one side, and then I will pack the tent up very hastily, put it in its stuff sack, and pack it on the outside of my pack liner, roll top my pack, bang, we're off. It's never much fun packing up in the rain. I can't make that fun for you. It's just a part of life. And on that note, I mean, you've got to embrace the rain, really. I, it's a mental sort of thing, I guess, is it? you just got to embrace the elements. I mean, you're out in this awesome sort of wilderness, hiking, I love it. And when I'm back home here and I'm walking around the street on a rainy day, I just think, gee, I wish I was in the wilderness walking in this rain. Because when you look back on it, you always think, have fond memories, those big days you've done in the rain. I mean, at the time, they're not much fun, but I look back on them and I absolutely love them. And any other quick tips? Well, of course, there's a couple. There's always, everyone's got a tip about hiking in the rain. But here's a couple. Watch your step. Take your time when you're raining. It's going to be slippery. It's going to be harder. Watch where you're walking. Keep an eye on the weather. Look at long range forecasts, things like that. I'm always looking at the 28 day rainfall forecast before I head out in a walk, sort of judging, you know, more, more or less just getting myself psyched mentally for what may be a bad trip with weather. So I'm always looking at the weather before a trip and I will have backup plans of other trips to do if it's looking really bad because if it is looking really bad then maybe i don't want to go up a precipitous mountain today in the pouring rain that's probably not a good idea and the other thing to consider is to think about your food i always have some meals on a big trip where i know they're going to be easy to eat if it's going to be rainy day all day i don't want to be trying to make a a nice wrap while i'm out on the trail stopping for lunch i basically will have a lot of energy bars that sort of thing and meals that i can just rip open and eat that's why i've used cold soaked meals and things before I can just have them ready to go in the morning then I'll just pull them out of the pack and munch into them so really think about your food and always have some sort of contingency for eating on those really bad rainy days I'll never forget another walk I was on a few years ago and I had that situation last day of the trip and I had a wrap that I had to make in the rain I couldn't make it so I just ate the wrap stuffed it in my face and had some more snack bars but think about your food as well and lastly again just I can't stress enough layer up layer down change your clothes as you need to stay comfortable and at the first sign of rain get that raincoat on and hopefully you will stay as dry as you possibly can now if you like this video you might also like this one where i do go through my favorite raincoat of all time it's a popular review of the beta ar rain jacket check that out until next time i will see you on the next one please like please subscribe do all that good stuff and i will see you next time thanks for watching